the KGB who they were and what they did. The KGB was the chief government intelligence and security agency of the Soviet Union from 1954 until its collapse in 1991. The Soviet Union was made up of 15 republics, Russia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarusia, Estonia, Georgia, Kyrgyzia, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldavia, Tajikistan, Turkmenia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. In some republics, the KGB didn't operate directly, but there were similar organizations that carried out the same tasks. The KGB consisted of two parts, intelligence services and military units that were totally separate from the Soviet armed forces. They operated as a completely independent government agency. And although the KGB marketed itself as the intelligence agency of the USSR, it was also a form of secret police, ensuring citizens all across the Republic stayed in line with Soviet ideals, and political dissidence was dealt with quietly and often fatally. KGB stands for Komitet Gosudarstvenoi Bezopasnosti, which translates to Committee for State Security in English. The most famous former KGB agent alive today is Russian President Vladimir Putin. In March 1954, the KGB replaced the existing MVD that had been in place the previous year and had such well-informed and successful agents of espionage that Joseph Stalin knew far less about his own agents than those working for the UK and the US. Over the course of the war and beyond, Soviet intelligence agencies had thousands of international spies operating in dozens of countries, and at one point was the largest institution of its kind. But at home, they were uncomfortably compared to Germany's World War II secret police, the Gestapo. Political dissidents, those who spoke out about anti-communist ideals or against the government, frequently found their homes invaded and themselves arrested, at best. As the world headed into the Cold War, this only intensified with the KGB, monitoring both private and public opinions of Soviet citizens at home. After the war, waves of anti-communist sentiment spread throughout the West, heightening the tensions of the hardening Cold War between the Soviets, Europeans, and Americans. This was called the Second Red Scare, the first that occurred decades earlier between 1917 and 1920, and before the creation of the KGB. During this period, the Americans became aware of the volume of Soviet spies across the U.S. living both legally and illegally. They feared what these spies would do to their society and political ideals. This was a particular fear of Senator Joseph McCarthy, who spearheaded investigations that led to hundreds of accusations of treason and subversion. It's impossible to know the true number of victims of McCarthy's fanatical approach to rooting out Russian spies, but estimates place the number of those imprisoned in the hundreds, and it's predicted over 10,000 lost their jobs as a result of being questioned. Subsequently, over the course of the early 1950s, the number of Soviet spies across America dropped dramatically with the last major illegal spy, Rudolf Abel, being betrayed by his assistant in 1957. Nevertheless, at home, the KGB continued to tighten the reins on Soviet society. In the 1960s, due to a U.S. political dissident, John Anthony Walker, Soviet intelligence was able to decipher thousands of U.S. Navy messages, giving them a decisive military edge, should they choose to act upon it. The Hungarian Revolution of 1956 began with a protest by university students against the USSR, as well as their hardline Stalinist former head of state, Matyas Rakosi. Prague Spring began in 1969, when Czechoslovakia tried to assert its independence from the USSR by reclaiming political power back into its member state. On both occasions, the Red Army of the USSR was quick to act, invading the countries and shooting thousands of protesters and civilians to quell the uprising. As usual, the KGB quickly and quietly worked alongside the Red Army and USSR's other operatives to destabilize the revolutions. In Czechoslovakia, they infiltrated pro-democratic institutions to undermine political sentiments and reported back to the Soviet government. On October 29, 1956, in Hungary, a report by chief of the KGB, Ivan Serov, claimed inaccurately that armed groups were seeking out communists and killing them, as well as any state security officials they found. 
The Hungarian military leader, Paul Meliter, responded by negotiating a diplomatic meeting between a Hungarian delegation and the USSR. During the midnight of that same evening, Serov ordered the arrest of the Hungarian delegation. The following day, after the removal of their leader by the KGB, the Soviet army attacked Hungary again. The uprising was quelled just seven days later, officially ending on November 11, 1956. After the uprising was over, Serov and the KGB continued to monitor Hungary closely, once again employing tactics to monitor any internal dissidents. By 1964, the head of the USSR, Nikita Khrushchev, had fallen out of political favor. He had denounced Stalin years earlier, a shocking move to the USSR, and had moved to eradicate Stalin's policies. This, coupled with his later handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis, led to other government officials and the KGB chief, Vladimir Simichesny, to plot his removal. Unlike most former heads of the USSR, Khrushchev did not meet an unfortunate end. On October 13th, when he landed at Vnukovo airport, he was met by Semichesny and other heads of the coup, who took him to the Kremlin, with little resistance from Khrushchev himself. 24 hours later, the premier announced his allegedly voluntary removal from power. He spent the rest of his life in a house paid for and monitored by the KGB, who recorded his every word and all visitors who came to his house. Khrushchev spent his last years writing memoirs that the KGB tried desperately to get their hands on. In 1970, after he was hospitalized, the agency instead went after his son, who finally handed over his father's original memoir notes, having already successfully smuggled copies to a Western publisher, much to the KGB's dismay. In the 1970s, the KGB became more heavily involved in South Asia. They influenced political opinion across newly formed Bangladesh, starting in 1973 with the installment of the first president, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Initially democratic, just two years later, Mujibur formed a one-party state. The KGB's influence grew exponentially across the rest of the 70s, despite Mujibur's own reign coming to an abrupt end six months later, when he and most of his family were assassinated during a coup. This didn't slow down KGB influence in Bangladesh, however. By the end of the decade, the number of officials in the area had more than doubled, and they had printed numerous defamatory news articles targeting the newly appointed and West-friendly de facto president, Zia Rahman. The KGB were heavily involved in Afghanistan in the late 1970s. They had heavily influenced political leadership in the country and sought to control it by placing a puppet president in the leadership role. But they were thwarted when the second president, Hafizullah Amin, took control of the country. They found themselves less able to control and influence his leadership. He wrote memos in English and spoke regularly with the United States. Eventually, the KGB claimed he was an American spy and undertook the successful operation of Storm 333, where they assassinated Amin. Their actions marked the start of the Soviet-Afghan War. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. Over the preceding years, the states had become looser republics, eventually culminating in the complete dissolution of the Union, much to the distaste of the KGB. In August 1991, the chairman of the KGB, Vladimir Khrushchev, launched a coup against Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev, alongside other Soviet leaders. Their intention was to re-centralize Soviet power in Russia, removing the increased liberties that had been given to the Soviet states. Ultimately, two days later, they failed, and it marked the final end stages of the complete dissolution of the Soviet Union and the KGB themselves.